welcome to puppetry treat number two, lesson number two in our pizzazz performing arts puppetry series. Um, I know I'm looking a little bit like a freak today. Uh, sorry about that, but it's rainbow day at my school. So, you know, hello, gotta go all out, right? In puppetry class number one, we talked about how puppetry is all about giving life to something that is lifeless. So taking an object and giving it a personality, making it seem alive. And we talked about the basics last week or last lesson. We talked about eyeline, making sure the audience knows exactly where your puppet is looking. Really important. But today we're going to go beyond that. We're going to look at so much more. What I want you to do today is just go crazy, go all out. If you look ridiculous today, excellent. I make a career out of looking ridiculous. So let's move on. Your mission in this lesson is the following. Okay, lesson objective. By the end of this lesson, you aim to achieve the following things. One, you aim to be able to give life to a lifeless object through movement and sound. Two, control audience focus, demonstrating clear eye line with your puppet. And lesson objective number three, improvise a short play with your puppet. Now remember, improvise means make up on the spot. Don't stop, don't think, just do. So those are our aims, our objectives. It is your mission possible. So that's what you need to worry about. Now the next slide, remember, is what your teacher needs to worry about, the curriculum stuff. You worry about your mission and you leave all the boring written stuff to your teacher. Yeah, let them do the boring stuff. Let's get to it. Now, if you did puppetry lesson number one, you manipulated a cushion to give it the illusion of life. Well, you're going to do the same thing today, but with something way more rigid. You're going to try and give a chair the illusion of life. So hit pause on the video and first things first, discuss what could you do with a chair to give it the illusion of life. Hit pause, have a chat. And we're back. Okay, enough discussion. Let's put our ideas into action. So on your own or in partners, you can take turns or help each other to make a chair seem alive. Now remember, be creative. It doesn't have to walk on its legs. Tip it upside down. Try something new. How can you inject life into a chair? Quick warm up activity, five minutes to give that a go. Good luck. And we're back. How did that go? Lots of crazy movement there with your chair? I hope so. Now let's take a moment to chill out. Let's relax and check out this video of Barnaby Dixon, an amazing puppeteer who started off by making puppets in his bedroom. Check out the video. The link is there. Have a watch. See what you think. And we're back. Pretty cool, huh? What do you think? Well, you could try that at home, making your own puppet to decorate your hand, just like Barnaby, who makes the most awesome puppets. But you know, you have the power to make awesome puppets as well, and you don't need anything except your bare hands. Yes, believe it or not, your hands have the power. And you can create an amazing puppet using nothing except that good old bare hand of yours. So, have a watch. I'm going to show you an example now of how I've made a puppet with just my bare hand. And to make it more interesting, I've interacted with a prop. Check it out. Hmm. 
So now it's your turn to try, okay? You are going to use your bare hand as a puppet and you are going to interact with a prop. Now, your prop could be anything. It doesn't have to be a pen like me. There might be something else. You might use a hat. You might use a drink bottle. You might use sunnies, yeah. You might use a tissue box. You might use a baby. Whatever you want is fine, okay? Pick your prop and give it a go, remembering to follow these criteria. These are your steps to success right here on the board. Can't read them because my sunnies are too dark. So, have a look at your criteria, your success criteria. You need a prop to interact with. You need to give your hand puppet unique movement. It doesn't have to walk on two legs, you know. It could move all sorts of ways, squelching, slithering. You need to have strong sound effects. Really strong, really loud. Don't be shy, just blurt, blurt them out. And clear eye line. What is your puppet looking at? One thing you might want to think about is where are your eyes for your animal? Are your eyes on your knuckles? Are your eye on your thumb? You know, where are your eyes? You need to decide that before you can even start. How can you have clear eye line if you don't even know where your puppet's eyes are? Your puppet's eyes might be on its thumb. So make sure you know where your eyes are and then you know where your eyes need to be looking for your clear eye line, okay? Have fun with it. <laughs> Good luck. Welcome back guys, time is almost up. Remember at the end of the lesson, you should always check back with your lesson objectives. You need to think, hey, how did I go? Self-reflect, have a look and see if you were able to achieve the aims that we talked about at the start of the lesson. Now, if you're enjoying yourself, guys, it doesn't have to end here. There's more that you can do at home or at school, like you could check out this link, a video of Darcy Lynn, a very famous and young puppeteer, and if you like her style of puppetry, which is ventriloquism, you could try speaking with your mouth shut as well, in front of a mirror or for a friend. Aha, and then there's more of Barnaby Dixon. Here's another video you could watch, and you could try making your own hand puppet using scrap materials at home or at school. So there's way more that you could do. And that's puppetry lesson number two, done and dusted. Thanks so much for joining us, I hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you'd like to learn more, well, we do have puppetry lesson number three as well. So you can move on to that one and bump your skills up to even another level. So, I hope to see you in puppetry lesson number three. This has been Pizzazz Primary Performing Arts. Hope you enjoy and remember, the whole world's a stage and the stage is yours. Thanks guys, see you in puppetry lesson number three.